Hey guys, Thermal here. Today we're going to be doing a video on macros, key binds, and the nameplate add-on I use. Start off, let's look at the macros I use. I will just say um, this is more hunter-specific add-ons, but um, obviously some of these key binds you can still use on different characters as well, just changing the spells uh, for that. Um, so just the first one, this is if you want your pet to attack like to switch targets as you attack, you can just write the pet attack command below um, something that you're casting. This one's really important, uh, the aspect of the turtle. So just being able to cancel aura aspect of the turtle. So this can also be used for pally bubble, can also be used for mage ice block as well if, if you play any of those classes too. Um, this one is when I'm playing beast mastery, but essentially I'm just trying to reduce the amount of buttons I have so I can think about other things instead. So my Blood Fury Ratio and um, my Trinket all get used in my burst and then I can just press that one button and the macro will cast all three of these things. The This is a, is a choice of what you can do but you can mouse over targets and cast counter shot. So um, instead of having to click on a target, you can just mouse over it, um, press the key bind, and it will counter shot that target. If you're not moused over anything, then it will just counter shot your current target. Um, I like this and I don't like this because sometimes you can accidentally be hovering over a mouse over and it will counter shot that target accidentally when you just want it to counter shot your current target. So it can work if if you learn it well enough, um, but I actually do something differently. I do focus targets. So basically I create a focus target and then um, say for example, I know it's a healer. I'm gonna create a focus target for that. And then, I'm, and then I have separate uh, binds for all my focus targets. So these spells here are all my focus target spells. So I'll create my focus and then I have a key bind um, for specifically just targeting my focus target. So now I can still be keeping my target, but then I see that my focus target's casting, and then I quickly um, use the focus target macro instead of my normal um, counter, counter shot spell. So that's uh, for these three. So yeah, you can see cast, target equals focus, and then the spell you want to use. Um, so that's for those ones. This one is really important at the start of Arena, especially when you're versing like a rogue or a double stealth team. And um, you're only going to see them pop out of stealth for a split second. So for example, I can just spam that. Um, that's trying to target something and it clears the target each time it's casting that spell. So clear target, target enemy, and then cast Hunter's Mark. So as soon as that um, rogue comes into my stealth vision, it's going to pick up on that target and instantly mark him. So I'll generally be spamming that at the start, and then if I pull it off, I'll quickly disengage so he doesn't get his sap off uh, on me, because that's obviously going to be more effective if he gets a sap off. Um, because it's going to bring me out of stealth and he's going to be able to get that opener. Um, Master's Call. So this one is basically, so it's going to mouse over a target. Um, so say you've got your raid frame set up here and I want to help my friend out with a Master's Call instead of myself. Um, then you just mouse over and press the bind. Um, that way you don't have to click them, then click back to your target. Misdirection, I've also done a mouse over as well, just because it's it's much easier. Um, mainly for PvE, so you've got your raid frame sitting here. For example, just hover over that and then cast that spell um, on that target. Uh, that one, once again, is the pet attack. Uh, so Roar of Sacrifice. Um, pretty much the same as Master's Call, so it's going to help a target if it exists, if, I mouse over, if my mouse over is on a raid frame or in-game on top of someone I can help, it's going to help them, otherwise it's going to target myself and use Roar of Sacrifice. Um, pretty much 
just eliminates the need to have to press on a on a different target and then um, go back to my my kill target. Uh, this one is for Beast Mastery again, and it's once again just a mouse over of the Spirit Mend ability, so I don't have to click on um, myself or click on someone else. And then Scattershot is this one's also another mouse over if you prefer to use mouse over over the focus. Uh, and then coming back to the burst sort of macros, this, this is sort of the same as the one up there, how you're just stacking up some of um, some of your moves that are on the same cooldowns so you know they're all just going to go off like that and this just allows you to think about other things because there's so much going on you need to think about when you're playing the game you don't need to have to make three new binds to learn as well on top of all that if pretty much most of the time you just want your burst to come in in one sort of wave and then finally, yeah, Tranquilizing Shot. Um, pretty good to have a mouse over one for that. Um, it's quite handy in PvE especially. Uh, so that's all the macros. And um, I'm not like a macro god or anything like that. I pretty much just type in Hunter macros into Google and then, or, or any macros and just try to modify it to work with the Hunter class. But um yeah, if there's anything I've missed, uh, leave it in the comments section. Um, these are ones that I'm just currently running and, and I find them pretty... It's, it's, it's pretty straightforward, nothing too complex, but um, yeah, they work for me. So hopefully that helps you guys as well. Now moving on to key binds. So as you can tell, I, I use bartender. So for me to bind um, something, I just type slash KB brings up this character binding and then I hover over my bars and, and press what I want my binds to be. So I use from 1 up to 6. Um, feels pretty comfortable for me. I don't have ginormous hands or anything like that, but I don't have small hands either. So whatever's comfortable for you to be able to press. I've got my less important binds further away. Sort of have my binds set up so that they're in sections. So I've got, um, you can see my burst cooldowns here. So 1 and 2 is my burst cooldowns double tap and the true shot and then over here I have a bit more of my defensive cooldowns so you can see aspect of the turtle um, exhilaration and then feign death over here some of my more niche spells sit over here so shift 1 I'm using shift 2 and shift 3 down this way shift 4 very rarely am I using that. I use shift wheel down for my stealth, my camouflage, and I actually use wheel down for my trinket just because it's really quickly. So um, for those of you who don't know, I'm, I'm using a Razor Naga mouse, so I've got the 12 buttons on the side, and then obviously if you want to use your trinket, you just like that. So it's, it's really quite quick to react to. So that's kind of good. I put my aspect of the cheetah um, on roll forward. It's just a habit I've sort of done since I started playing. Like any class I played, it was like, oh, I'm playing rogue. So I put my sprint on wheel up. Um, you know, playing druid, put that on wheel up, like the sprint. So that's just something kind of in my muscle memory and it allows me to change between classes without being too confused like changing binds all the time. So you, I try to keep consistent between the different classes I play. Uh, right now I'm sticking to one class hunter just because um, you're going to be able to get better progression if you stick with one class rather than switching around a lot of times. So if you enjoy the class you play then then yeah you should just stick with that. So this sort of row down here Q E R F Z X C and T V so I pretty much use um, WASD as my movement key. So everything sort of in that range around there I'm using for a lot of my main my main sort of spells. Uh, like you can see Binding Shot and Disengage, Explosive Shot. X I've gotten used to as my Interrupt. So on every single class I've ever played, my Interrupt is always on X. So I'm sure... You guys have a different 
um, keybind for that, but that's just been the one for me. Resonating arrows on T, um, V. So this is just sort of the range that I'm sort of comfortable going towards. So I can sort of go up to about that sort of section of the keyboard and it's all very um, quite good in my muscle memory now. So um, depending on how long your fingers are and um, also just just what you're comfortable with, you may be able to extend that range a bit further. But I also um, make use of the mouse as well, which I'll go into now. So I've changed them over. Um, you can change so that this one stands for something on the keyboard. So I've changed it so the one stands for F1, F and two stands for F2, just so that um, I'm not using using up one, two, three, four on the keyboard, for example, because I like to use those as keybinds as well. So I've got my steady shot on on F1, F2 is my aim shot, and my arcane shots on on the th F3 or the third mouse button. I then use control and, and the mouse buttons for this next part here. So control, tranquilizing shot, um, control um, F2 for rapid fire, and then control F3 for kill shot. I just find that the top three mouse buttons are probably the easiest for me to use. Um, so I've just gotten mostly used to that. The other sort of um, keybinds I have are shift ones and these ones are spells I don't use as much but um, they're still really quick to press like if I press shift Q for example that that doesn't take me long at all like shift R um, so these ones come across here I've got my summon steward on shift C and I've got my file of serenity on shift T with the health stone shift V so these two you know both healing spells um, right next to each other and they sort of fall in line there with the exhilaration and, and those defensive cooldowns as well. I've got my mount up on shift wheel up. Um, just gotten used to that. Basically, um, I think it's definitely a good idea to have your <laughs> your mount up on a keybind. Doesn't have to be an important keybind, just on a keybind so you're not constantly having to press. And then for my mammoth mount is control wheel up. That's basically when I just want to repair whatever I've got sort of thing. Um, I have got more keybinds. They are hidden from you guys because they're behind my actual webcam. On So over on the left bottom section, I have my focus keybinds where I've, I've sort of just put them off to the side there because I don't need to, to see them. But I've just got them there. And um, so basically, yeah, my focus keybinds is control, so the control mouse button, and then whatever um, the the keybind is for that spell. So it's control X is my focus target counter shot, and then it's control E for my focus target scatter shot, and and control Q for my concussive shot uh, for the focus target. Uh, that's pretty much everything I do keybind related. Um, you guys probably have your own systems. It's it's completely up to you what you want to do. This is just what I've adapted, what I've found works for me. If you haven't used keybinds before, I definitely recommend um, getting into it because it's really helpful to do that. The other thing, if you haven't done, and will probably bring your uh, the more talking PvP here bring your arena game up a notch is being able to um, change targets. So tar in keybinds targeting, you will have, um, so target arena enemy one, target arena enemy two, and then target arena enemy three. So I use shift um, F12, F11, and then F10 kind of like intuitively as it sort of sits on the on the screen from top to bottom is top to bottom and I use my thumb to press that so basically the way I'm using this this mouse is kind of like forward back in a way um, and then I also have 
you can see with my focus arena in a Mi 1, instead of pressing shift, I press control. So then I can change my focus. And this is something I've only adapted recently, but I've found it's improving my game already. It was a suggestion from one of you guys, so thanks for that. Um, I do appreciate the tip. Uh, so that's it for the um, keybinds, and now we'll get into the uh, nameplates. So I get asked this question probably the most out of anything, and that's what nameplates I use. The nameplates I choose to use is threat plates. So the reason I use threat plates is because I've just found it's very highly customizable. So you can make it work however you want it to. For, like just looking at this, for example, um, smaller becomes bigger when you target it. Um, you can change, you can alter that if you want. You can change the size of these icons. You can change the size, how big the CC icons are, how big the um, dot icons are, like these ones here. Uh, you can change uh, it to show uh, what color you want the enemy's names to appear, what color you want the bars to be, just, just everything you can think of is pretty much customizable with this add-on. So that's the reason why I uh, run with this one. So once you've installed threat plates, if you choose to go with this nameplate add-on, I'm going to show you uh, my process. So you just type slash tptps to get into the interface. Um, you want to have these four ticked because um, you always want to show nameplates. It's just really handy to have. Um, especially, I think, for a healer, you want to have friendly nameplates as well. I did play a healer previously to playing the Hunter, so I have gotten used to having friendly nameplates on. And the way I've sort of set it up, so the way I can tell between um, whether it's an enemy or whether it's an ally is by using this custom color. So the first thing I would do is go into names and um, by default, both these custom colors are white. Um, but I change it so that the enemy name color is red so that you can see. So see that uh, name just above him, it's red instead of white. And that's how I am able to tell, is that an enemy? Is that an ally, for example? So that's the, the first thing that you can do. Um, second thing, turn off threat system. Basically, this is just going to change that the color of that bar based on the threat that you have on that target. And unless you're a tank, you really don't need this. It's just information you don't need. So turn off in, um, the enable threat system. So next, um, go into scale. This is where you're gonna change how large you want the nameplate bars to appear. Uh, completely customizable. I have made my enemies appear with larger nameplates. Uh, enemy players being larger than enemy NPCs, and then friendly, I've got it down to 35%, just because I am a DPS and I preferably want to know more information about enemy player nameplates than I do friendly player. So if I move these around, for example, you can see them changing their size. So whatever suits you, but uh, personally, I don't like mine too big because yeah, once you get a full stack of enemies together, it, you won't be able to tell which enemy is which if your nameplates are too large. So the next thing um, to do is to go into widgets and then go into auras. Um, scroll down and you have the scale of your debuffs, buffs, and crowd control. So this is the setup I've done, 100% on my debuff. 150% on my buffs. The reason why I've put um, buffs up is because I have tranquilizing shot and I want to be removing buffs when I can. Um, so I make that a little bit larger. And then crowd control is probably the most important thing in terms of uh, PvP. So I want to be able to see when a target is crowd controlled. Um, just for myself, like if I don't have communication, for example, if I'm in a, a BG and someone's um, putting down, like say someone uses a freezing trap, for example, I want to be able to see that freezing trap 
um, yeah, that freezing trap go off really easily. And um, so this this will scale with the bar. So it's at, it's at its maximum size for whatever you set the bar to. So say I put the that up, then you can see that it's also going up as well. So because it's just a, a neutral NPC, it does look a little bit smaller. But when I have enemy players, that icon becomes, um, well, let's just test it, 65%. It's about that big. Yeah, which I, I think is definitely enough for me to see um, my target being CC'd. And that's about all the, the fiddling around I've done with my threat plates. Um, but yeah, so if you if you do want to have um, a name plates that gives you a little bit more information than your normal Blizzard UI setup, then I would suggest going with this. Um, I've found it's it's just the one I use. Like honestly, I'm sure other people much prefer others, and that's completely fine. But um, really, it just comes down to what can you customize in a nameplate add-on, and how how does it look? Like, do you like the look of the nameplate add-on? And um, yeah, so that's just my personal preference. Um, but feel free to have a look around it and just tweak those settings until you feel comfortable with the way it looks and the way it feels. So that's it for this video. I hope you've learned something. If I've missed anything, leave a comment, let me know. Um, let others know as well, because that's going to help them too. I do have some news. I have just recently started Twitch. I'm going to give it a go, um, as I think it's just going to be a good way that I can interact with you guys a bit more live. Like It's easier for me to just speak than having to type to all the comments. So if you're interested in asking any questions, you just want to hang out, you want to talk, um, I'll leave my Twitch handle in the description below and um, I'll be streaming today doing some arena. At the moment I'm just going to start off doing one stream a week but we'll see how we go. Thanks for watching this video and I will see you next time. Bye.